So a very good day to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Gopinath. Today we will be discussing about a very important topic in general surgery which is anesthesia. So surgery in general is impossible, almost impossible I can say, in the absence of anesthesia. Anesthesia and post-operative pain relief are integral components of any surgical procedure. So this anesthesia can be either general or local. So whatever it is, it should be said that anesthesia carries paramount importance as far as general surgery is concerned. To, de to highlight the importance of anesthesia, Halstead once said that because of advancements in anesthesia, it has made sure that any idiot can perform any surgery. So that's how important anesthesia is. So though we will not be going into too much of detail regarding anesthesia as such, but its importance and the various common anesthetic techniques and the anesthesial techniques or anesthetics that are provided as well as their role in providing intraop anesthesia as well as post-operative pain relief will be discussed to an extent in this topic. So let's start off with a little bit of history. So the history of anesthesia is quite interesting to say the least. A first surgical procedure as such was performed by Dr. William Morton under the effect of ether. He administered ether to a patient with a neck tumor and proceeded with excising the tumor. So this was done way back in 1846. Two years prior to that, in 1844, Dr. Horace Wells, another dentist, had administered nitrous oxide to a patient to facilitate painless extraction of tooth. Dr. Simpson of Edinburgh University Use, introduce chloroform as an agent to induce anesthesia to circumvent some of the ill effects of ether. Though it was met with a lot of opposition initially, the use of chloroform actually uh, subsequently became to be more accepted after Queen Victoria herself accepted, to ac uh, accepted chloroform as a modality as an agent of anesthesia while giving birth to her eighth son, Prince Leopold way back in 1853. So since then, anesthesia has progressed significantly and has now come to a level where you have come to a level where it is possible to induce anesthesia and maintain a patient in anesthesia for prolonged periods of time with minimal side effects. Now, so the very fact that anesthesia involves placing the person in a state of deep sedation with the lack of awareness, WHO introduced a surgical safety checklist in order to reduce perioperative complications of anesthesia. Now, initially an anesthetist was considered to be a person who remains within the operating theatre, takes care of a person in the operating theatre and has no role subsequently. Now that concept has changed completely. Now a modern anesthetist is also called a perioperative physician. He takes care of the patient preoperatively, operatively and postoperatively. Preoperatively, he ensures that the patient is adequately stabilized and is fit enough to undergo a surgical procedure with minimal risk. Intraoperatively, he ensures that the procedure goes on smoothly and the patient is adequately in a, has adequate anesthesia. And postoperative, he takes care of pain relief as well as helps in maintaining homeostasis. So, an anesthetist is no longer a purely intraoperative person. He is now a person who takes part in every limb of surgery or surgical care. So, in most people, especially laymen, the term anesthesia is synonymous with general anesthesia. So, general anesthesia is basically, it involves three important components. It includes amnesia, which is lack or loss of awareness analgesia, which is loss of pain, and muscle relaxation. It involves two important phases, one is induction, another one is maintenance. So induction of anesthesia is generally carried out by administering intravenous agents. Initially what was used was thiopentone, and it has now been replaced by a safer drug which is propofol. The other agents or drugs which are used for induction of anesthesia are etomidate and ketamine. Newer agents like benzodiazepine receptor agonists, ethomidate derivatives and phospropofol are now under study for their use as induction agents. So, 
with IV induction agents, we have moved forward towards inhalational induction agents it's because inhalational induction agents are said to be less irritant compared and more acceptable compared to IV induction agents. Commonly used uh, induction, inhalation induction agents include sevoflurane. So, this is commonly used in children who are actually afraid of needle pricks and even adults who might be needle phobic and in patients with difficult airway. The most important thing is with inhalational agents that they are likely to go in for airway obstruction. So, they need to be monitored extremely carefully and closely. There is an entity called rapid sequence induction. So, rapid sequence induction involves administering an IV anesthetic agent along with a rapidly acting muscle relaxant. So, by this, this is generally used in emergency settings in individuals who need to be induced as quickly as possible. And in a non-emergent settings, when you want to induce a patient who has a gastric outlet obstruction or in whom the stomach is likely to be full or in individuals who are at high risk of regurgitation, basically that is what it means. So, trauma emergency rapid sequence induction plays a very important role. Even in non-emergent cases wherein you have a full stomach or poor gastric uh, emptying, for example, in a patient with say uh, gastric outlet obstruction because of a tumor or a cicatrizing ulcer, etc. These in patients who are at high risk of regurgitation are generally induced by this rapid sequence induction. Now, what is becoming more popular is the use of totally intravenous anesthesia, wherein we make use of a combination of propofol and an agent called remifentanil. So, with this you find that recovery is almost hassle free. It has an action, the person recovers quickly and the recovery does not have any post recovery effects. Analgesia and anesthesia is quite adequate and it is now being used extensively in daycare surgeries also in neurosurgical procedures and some cardiopulmonary bypass techniques.